detected. Hostile control point identified. If you guys are interested in being a member, then click the join button down below to check out the available perks. The first tier is only $1. Thank you to those of you who choose to join. With that said, welcome to another Division 2 build breakdown video. The purpose of today's build is to combat the changes made to the summit and dominate the mode once again. The legend killer build I made to combat the hardest hitting NPCs in the game, which at the time of making that video was the elite NPCs. Seeing as that's no longer the case, and it's now the red and purples which seem to be hitting the hardest and be most aggressive, I've made a build to combat those instead. This build is more than capable of getting you to floor 100 solo, but I wouldn't recommend using it to fight against the hunters. The devs clearly want us to camp in that doorway in order to beat the hunters, which in my opinion is extremely boring, but hey that's the devs for you, why make it fun? In today's video I'll showcase the legend killer build 2.0 and show how effective it is. This build was made to tank mass amounts of damage for legendary NPCs, but also made to put out a lot of damage as well. This version of the build hits a lot harder than the previous build because we were able to drop 30% protection from elites. The reason I dropped over 30% is because we may only come across one or two elite NPCs a floor, if that, so there's no need to have such high percentage in protection from elites. So with us dropping that percentage, this allowed me to spec a lot more into multiplicative damage, like armor damage and damage to targets out of cover, which currently on this build is at 18%, which boosts both our base and crit damage numbers. With max rolls on this build, you can achieve 50% crit chance and 90 to 100% critical hit damage, which is very similar to the original build's damage stats. The big difference here is I've added armor damage and damage to targets out of cover, taking our base damage body shots from 500k to 880k and our 1 million body crit shots to 1.7 million plus. Today's build can be difficult to make as it has named pieces of gear that are difficult to obtain, pieces that you also need to have the right minor attributes on so that you can reroll the core attribute. This build has 1.9 million base armor and is easily capable of 2 million plus armor thanks to the 60% bonus armor we gained from the Adrenaline Rush talent. I've seen a lot of people suggest using the Memento backpack and while the Memento is a great piece of gear to run, a bag with a talent Adrenaline Rush is just better. The reason I say this is because it's a lot more convenient. It doesn't require a kill to gain armor nor does it require you to change position in order to collect the trophy. If you are rushed by 5 NPCs, which is very much the case now in the summit, using a memento you'll be forced to kill in order to gain extra survivability, as the adrenaline rush will be giving you the bonus armor just for enemies being within 10 meters of you. It also refreshes every 5 seconds, so if any armor is lost you gain it back pretty quick without being forced to get a kill. Now we are still using the bulwark shield which is at 13.5 million health, the same as the previous build but this one will be stronger, reason being is we switched out the striker drone for the artificial hive. This increases skill efficiency so our shield gets a nice buff across the board. The skill is also very convenient as you don't have to place it down in order to benefit from it. When you play solo the highest effects apply to you while it's holstered so the only thing you need to deploy is your shield. On top of the changes to our skills and gear pieces we have also changed our specialization to the technician giving us one extra skill tier which will boost the efficiency of both our skills. We also gain 12% damage to drones, skill proxies and robotics. This really helps with the drone floors and the floors with the robotic turrets and dogs. The technician is also what allows us to access the artificial hive. Today's build was built with balance in mind, enough protection from elite so elite bosses and elite NPCs don't insta shred us, a boost of damage to help us kill purple and red NPCs faster, and finally more shield health and efficiency so we can defend against focus fire and nade spam. 
This version of the build is the more damage focused version of the build. If you wanted more survivability, you could simply change the chest piece talent to unbreakable, the knee pads to the Empress Guard pads that give you 1% extra armor regen. This way you'd have 2% armor regen on the build and 95% of your armor instantly repaired when it breaks, essentially giving you a second life. When it comes to the weapons used with this build, all of them have their purpose. The shotgun is great for if you want to run and gun. The assault rifle is great for the floors where there's EMPs at distance and you need to destroy them. And of course we have the pistol paired with a shield allowing us to play aggressive or defensive. Before we get into the build breakdown, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for the support on my recent videos. You guys have been killing it with the likes, still hitting around a thousand likes a video with ease. Thanks to you guys hitting that like button and commenting down below, we've been pushed into that recommended section a lot more often, and it's because of that we have gained 4,000 subs this month. Don't sleep on the power of the like button and the comment section guys. Interaction is a big part in what helps us grow, so keep it up. With that said, if you haven't already, smash that like button to help us grow, subscribe if you're new for lots more Division 2 content, now let's get into the build breakdown. Right guys, getting into this build breakdown, we had a technician for our specialisation, we've already gone over that and why we're using it, the extra damage to the drones and skill proxies, we also get that one skill tier. Moving on to our secondary weapons, I have this shotgun which is the Marine Super 90, we have close and personal rolled on there, damage to armour and damage to targets out of cover. Looking at the attachments, we have crit chance on the scope, crit chance on the laser pointer, and we have the plus 20% reload speed, because you know shotgun's got those terrible reloads. Moving on to our assault rifle, I'm using the tactical MK16. This is a weapon great for long range. It has a higher base damage than most assault rifles. It has a lower RPM, that's why it has a higher base damage. We have 50 in a magazine. This is pretty good rolled, as you can see, 15% assault rifle damage, 16.5% health damage. Um, it's a shame that's not a little bit higher because I believe the health damage applies to things like the EMPs and we have 10% damage to targets out of cover and the talent I'm using is Optimist because I'm not going to be getting kills so I'm not going to gain any big damage this is just about killing the EMPs looking at the attachments on this weapon we have 5% critical hit chance and I'm purposely using the C79 scope so that I can zoom in looking at the laser pointer we have 5% crit chance on there we have 5% critical hit chance on the scope we have 5% critical hit chance on the muzzle break, and then finally, we had the extra 20 rounds in the magazine. Moving on to our primary weapon, which of course is the Liberty Pistol, just the best pistol in the game, the hardest hitting at 373.7k base damage, 173 RPM with 8 in the magazine, 93 reload straight away at 8. We have 14% pistol damage and 10% damage targets out of cover. And then we have Liberty or Death, hits grant plus 2% weapon damage stacks up to 30 times, so we can gain 60% out of this. That's a crazy amount of damage for this pistol, bearing in mind it has such a high base damage. Headshots consume all stacks of pain your shield for 3% per stack. Now even if we are going against hunters or rogues or something that hits our shield extremely hard, even if we get focus fired and it melts our shield down, a few body shots and then a headshot and you gain a lot of that health back. Looking at the attachments on this weapon, we have 5% headshot damage on the scope, we have 5% crit chance on the muzzle, we have 15% rate of fire on the grip, which I don't actually see a grip there, but apparently it's a grip, and then the magazine gives us 15% weapon handling, which you honestly do not feel because this thing has terrible recoil and it does take a lot of practice to get good with it. Now we have covered the weapons, let's get into the build, starting off with the DNH mask. We have 170k armor, 12% critical hit damage, 3.4% critical hit chance, sadly a low roll, and then 12% protection from elite's firearm mod. Moving on to our chest piece, we have the Bellstorm armory chest piece giving us 1% armor regen. And I'm sorry guys, there are people in my comment section saying why use that, 1% is such a tiny amount, it plays a huge role. There's going to be times that your armor, your original armor is going to get melted down, you're going to need to be healing when you're behind your shield. And what's also great is because we get bonus armor, that sits on top of our base armor, so we can heal while that bonus armor is on top. So it works out really nicely. They pair together very nicely, having the uh, adrenaline rush bonus armor, and then this passive healing over time. So we have 132k armor rolled on here, the core attribute, 6% crit chance, 10.5% crit crit damage, and 12% protection from elite's firearm mod. We gain 35 weapon damage, amplified weapon damage from Intimidate talent as you can see. While you have bonus armor, amplifies total weapon damage by 35% to enemies within 10 meters. 
Now moving on to our holster, we have the improvised holster. There's still many of you who don't know about this stuff, still sleeping on it and still totally clueless. You can get this piece of gear at the base of operations, the crafting bench. I believe most people at level 40 will have these pieces. I have heard people say that you need to finish all side missions in order to gain a blueprint or you need to farm level 4 control points. I'm not 100% on it. If anyone knows for 100% on how you get these, let me know in the comment section below, it would be very much appreciated. We have 170k armor, max armor, 9.5% critical hit damage, and 6% crit chance. And then a mod with 12% protection from elites. Now what's great about improvised gear, when it comes to the holster, gloves and knee pads, we gain an extra mod slot. So that's why you would use these. You will lose out on a brand set bonus or a gear set bonus, but you will gain the extra mod slot. Moving on to our knee pads, we are using the Fox's Prayers. I rolled them for 170k armor, so with max armor, we have 8% damage targets out of cover, which stacks on top of the damage out of cover that we have on our weapons, and sadly, we have 10% skill haste. Now, if I had the crit chance here, I'd be at the 50% mark where I want to be. That's the only thing that's hindering my build at the minute is the lower crit chance because of these knee pads. I'm looking at our gloves. And we had the contractor gloves. Now, although we don't benefit from the 10% LMG damage, we do benefit from the damage to armor at 8%. Um, works very well against the purple NPCs. We have 170k armor again and 5.1% critical hit chance. Now, if you want to, you can switch these out for, say, Seska gloves so you can gain the extra 10% critical hit chance. Or if you're happy with a crit chance, you can go for some extra crit damage. Just like these gloves here, I have been testing. I do switch back and forth to find out what I feel better with. At the moment, I'm liking this combination. Moving on to our backpack. And this is a piece where I'm in an R and about. It's 5% total armor, which is nice because it gets us to the 1.9 million mark. But at the same time, I'm thinking I might switch this out for the Matador. Reasoning being is because we gain an extra 3% for every stack of armor we get. So usually you'd get 20% with Adrenaline Rush, but now we'd be getting 23%. So we get the 3% three times, that's 9%. So that would be more armor than we'd be getting from the 5% total armor. And we get Adrenaline Rush a lot, like a lot, a lot. So why not have this talent and benefit more from the bonus armor? So going back to the Gilligard backpack, we have 5% total armor, we have 156k armor, 5.9% critical rate chance, 11.9% critical rate damage, and 12% protection from elites via a mod. As you can see, we have the Adrenaline Rush talent. This talent comes in clutch, and it's so much better than using a memento, guys. Trust me, it's so much more convenient. It comes in clutch a lot more often as well. Whenever you are within 10 meters of an enemy, gain 20% bonus armor for 5 seconds, stacks up to 3 times. And I think that is pretty much it for the build, guys. Um, like I said um, earlier on in the video, you can switch out the chest piece talent and put Unbreakable there. I believe I might have one in here that you can see down at the bottom. I have Perfectly Unbreakable. As you can see, you can get 100%. I believe the um, not perfect version is 95%, so you'll gain 95% armor back when it breaks, which is a lot of survivability. You can also switch out these knee pads for the Emperor's Guard, which will gain you the extra 1%, as you can see there. So you have options. I find it's very well balanced. We have a lot of survivability. We are tanky at 1.9 million armor. We have a shield that is hella tanky as well. We have the passive healing over time, thanks to the armor regeneration. We have armor damage, which is great for the purples. We have Damage to targets out of cover, which a lot of NPCs are running at you, so they're always out of cover. Um, also great for the robotics who are running around like lunatics and pretty hard to hit, so they're always out of cover as well. So this damage applies quite a lot. It stacks with the Liberty as well, because as you can see, we have 10% damage to targets out of cover here. So that's 10%, then another 8%, so 18% damage to targets out of cover. It's also multiplicative damage, so it's just really nice to have. Looking at our skills, and I'm not in the base of operations this time, so I won't have a ridiculous cooldown like 500 skill haze. I see you guys keep pointing that out. We have a 16.7 second cooldown. Now, you're in control of your shield. It's only going to go down if you let it. As long as you're hitting body shots, hitting that headshot with your pistol, you're not losing this shield. You are not losing this shield, and I'm sure in the gameplay somewhere, I will show you where I get real low, and then I instantly gain it back with a headshot. So we're at a tier 6, as you can see. Looking at the mods on our shield, and as you can see, I have 4.9% shield health. I got a better mod finally. We have 4.1% on this one, so I can obviously get a better mod right there. And then we have the... Damage bonus, which doesn't apply because we're not using the firewall. So I'm not sure if you can get another another shield health there. It'd be nice if I could and bump the shield health up a little bit more. Now moving on to the artificial hive. As you can see, the refill speed is 6.3 seconds. We have 12 charges and the duration is 
237 seconds so that lasts a pretty long time the health doesn't matter because it's sitting on our back all the time we don't have to place this high down on the floor to benefit from it the charges come out while it's holstered so it's great so again very convenient and that is pretty much it guys for all the build and the build pieces and all that good stuff. I'm going to leave you with a stat sheet. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I'm going to leave you guys with some gameplay and show you some more of what this build is capable of. Don't forget to smash that like button guys. And leave a comment down below and I'll reply like I always do. We've had three to 400 comments a video of late. And I've tried my best to answer each and every one of you. Thank you again for all of your support. Thank you for 21k subscribers. We are now on the road to 22k. With that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, Mob Squad.